Assalamualaikum and good evening. I be to my lovely madam Dr. Farah bin Abdul Hanim. We are from Good Tree. Would like to propose our proposal of a new chemical plant production. First and foremost, I am Muhammad Hazib Abdul Malik, assigned as the project manager of the company, and I would like to bring you to the company background. Quadratex Chemical mainly manufactures chemical product that can be used either as an intermediate product or as a direct final product for multi-purpose commercialization. The business has its headquarters in Klang, Selangor. And to satisfy the demand for chemical product especially in Malaysia, the business has the vision of becoming the best of local and globally dispersed chemical processing sectors. Quadratex Chemical also has a goal to assign top-notch facilities to our consumers with high-performance chemical products. Therefore, as the Malaysian government has introduced several incentives to promote the expansion of the chemical industry in Malaysia, by setting up a new chemical plant, Quadratex Chemical wonderfully proposed to extend the company's market. Therefore, as the company is already new to the chemical com- manufacturing market, a lot of research has been undertaken to ensure the company's strategy and mission was achieved. Ethylene was chosen from the list as the main product of the company out of three proposals that had been made for the company. The Ethylene production is taken as the main development and project of the company. I am Layatul Najah binti Muhammad Zabiti and I will present about the project background. The purpose of this project is to design a plan that efficiently convert a liquid ethanol into high purity ethylene gas using an alumina catalyst. Ethylene is expected to safeguard the company national market and also to give the company a significant profit. Due to its simple chemical formula combined with a double bond, ethylene is a strong uh, starting molecule to bring on. It's also the raw material for the manufacture of various grade of polyethylene, other bulk and base chemicals. These products are used in a wide range of industrial and consumer markets, including the packaging, shipping, electrical or electronic, garment and construction sectors, as well as additive, coating and adhesive for consumer use. The project needs to be planned and organized within our budget, within our budget and during the proposed time span. So, we're moving on to the objective of this project. The aim of this project is to manufacture ethylene to other chemical industry as a raw material. We would like to produce high-end product that will give the best chemical quality that is used by people. We also plan to grow the number of clients by, by more than 20% each year and creating an organization that will operate by, by its own benefit. Furthermore, we want to develop a new chemical product with a strong consumer demand that will boost our revenue and protect company's national market. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Afifan Rizanti Mohamad Nazri and I am going to proceed with the product background of our company that is Ethylene. So Ethylene is the simplest alkene in unsaturated hydrocarbon with carbon-carbon double bond which has the formula C2H4. Ethylene appears to be colorless gas with a very sweet odor and taste. Ethylene can easily be ignited and under prolonged exposure to heat and fire, it can cause explosion. Ethylene can be produced by heating natural gas such as propane and ethane or petroleum up to 900 degrees Celsius. Alright, Ethylene is the world's, world's most uh, widely used petrochemical. It is primarily used in uh, polyethylene such as plastic bag, construction uh, for construction components like piping, windows, etc. Ethylene can undergo many types of reactions such as oxidation, polymerization, halogenation, and also hydration. My name is Nori Daya Binti Jafri. Let's start with product selection process. Before starting with the project, three chemicals were firstly proposed, which were sodium hydroxide, phenol, and ethylene. In order to select only one chemical, few criteria or factors were considered, which are market demand and material supply. Scoring method is being used to select one product by calculating the weightage score. 
Based on further research and analysis, Italy had the highest weighted score and it is being chosen as our company manufacturer. I am going to proceed with the scoring method for every product we propose. So we chose three products, that is Italine, Phenol Sodium Hydroxide, and the categories are divided into market demand, material supply, expected operating life, equipment and installation labor, waste and disposable service, and the total weightage is 1. So for Italine, Phenol and Sodium Hydroxide, uh, score 1 represents unfavorable, score 2 represents set satisfactory and score 3 represents favorable so in this table it shows italian has the highest score of 2.1 makes it the best product for our new production plant i am going to continue with the scoring method for every site selection we choose so we choose three location that is Kerteh, bintulu and also pasir gudang for categories it is divided into labor cost Labor productivity, labor supply, infrastructure, material supply, material cost, government incentives, proximity to market, political and strategic consideration, and also climate. And the weightage is equals to one. So in this table, it shows that Pasir Gudang has the highest score of two point two five, which makes it the best site for our production plant. Moving on to market feasibility study, there are three main components in this part, which are supply and demand raw material availability and also prices. The first one, supply and demand. According to a report, the Italian market demand will be increasing by 6.1% by 2027. This growing rate is happening due to growing and user industries like agriculture, automotive, packaging and building and construction. The second one, raw material availability. To produce ethylene, ethanol, ethanol is chosen as feedstock. Ethanol is being mass produced outside of Malaysia by using corns and sugar cane. USA has the highest ethanol production which is then being imported into Malaysia. Moving on to the third one, ethylene prices. Based on the graph shown here, Italian prices does not have any exact trend. From 2018 to 2019, the price went down due to the lower price of the raw material which caused the overproduction of Italian. However, in 2019 and 2020, the price stayed the same. This is because in 2020, COVID-19 happened. In 2021, the price is projected to grow a little bit more due to a high demand and the abundantly available of raw material. Process feasibility study. A process flow diagram of ethanol dehydration process is being made. This is to show the flow of the process itself as well as the equipment being used in this process. Firstly, 95% of ethanol and 5% of water is being fed into the pump. This pump will pressurize and heat the ethanol which then be transferred to different equipment. The end product, the end main product of this process is ethylene which has around 99.7% purity and the byproduct is the ethyl ether which make up by 0.02%. Next, let's see our organizational chart. Member of the project teams are also appointed in the organizational chart. Nora Afifa binti Muhammad Nazri is appointed as our process leader. She is responsible to provide a reliable and cost-effective operations to analyze and understand the production flow of the product and to optimize the process. And to our production leader, Lailatul Najah binti Muhammad Zabidi. She is responsible to arrange and coordinate the production work plan and project priorities to fulfill customers' demand by making the resource of the project capable to demand. And next, we have Nur Hidayah binti Jafri as our quality assurance and quality check leader. She is responsible of setting up the standards quality to the client and monitoring the performance each equipment and schedule turns to and turns it to a report. Next, 
Our official organizational chart represents the leaders, admin, supply chain manager, and all the assistant and supervisor. Then we also do have WBS bringing us a meaning of work breakdown structures. It clearly demonstrates the relationship between the project deliverables and the scope. We do have four level on this figure. Job description. In the project, there are different positions in which each position is being assigned to their own different respective roles. For example, project manager or also known as PM. PM is responsible in being the leader and the overall process itself. They track progress and ensure that the project is being completed within the time allocated and within the budget. The second one is the process leader. Process leader will ensure that the committee find the problems, the root problems that can occur in the future. They also provide a reliable and cost-effective operation as well as being the guide to junior engineer. The third one is the production leader. Production leader ensure and monitor the quality of the product that are received in the end. They also ensure that the resources are capable to demand by arranging and coordinating. And the last one is quality admin or quality admin control. They are responsible in monitoring the performance of the equipment as well as determining the product specification, the procedure of the product and the quality of the product. They also manage the R&D team. My map is created by putting all project related information together during early planning project stage. In my map, there are main branches which represent different areas of the project itself. After main branches, there are smaller branches. These smaller branches represent the components that are existing in the main branches. Like the mind map that we have here, the main branches are organization, startup, marketing, closure, operation, procurement, production, and also construction. Project scheduling concern when exactly a particular task should begin and end. This is to ensure that a project can deliver on time. Besides that, knowing how much time a team must complete a project make it easier for our project manager to allocate, ta to allocate tasks and get things done. Therefore, many project managers rely on this project schedule to set time frame parameters for project. So in the next slide, there is a table of the details activity with duration of this project of our project for each phase. PERTS and CPM PERTS is the short form for Program Evaluation and Review Technique and CPM is the short form for Critical Path Method Both methods are one of the technique of scheduling and both methods employ, employ networks to schedule and display task order and identify critical path and activity slack and in the next slide there are two types of network which lies under PERTS and CPM which is the first type is activity on arrow diagram or AOA and the next one is the activity on node diagram or AON. Another technique of scheduling is gun chart. Gun chart is a very useful way of showing what work is scheduled to be done on a specific day. It is also to it also help you to view the start and end date of a project in just a simple table. So beside here is our gun chart that consists of the activity and the, the start and end date of the project. The critical part of our project we have from activity A to P and in the table we can see that there are slack in activity I, J and also O 
So ES stands for earliest start time, which means earliest time an activity can start, assuming all the predecessors are completed. For EF, it is earliest finish time, which earliest time can of an activity can be finished. For LS, it is latest start time, which means latest time an activity can start. Do not delay the completion of the project. And we have LF, which is latest finish time, which means latest time of an activity to finish. Do not delay the completion of the project. So based on the table, we can indicate that the critical path of the project is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, K, L, M, and P with the critical time of 39 months. For monitoring and controlling method, monitoring is the collection, recording, and reporting of the project information that is of the importance to the project manager. Some of the monitoring methods include the Gantt chart and earned value analysis. In this process, uh, there are some essential information like budgeted cost work performance, BCWP, budgeted cost work schedule, BCWS, actual cost work performed, ACWP, and also the percentage of completion. From this value, we can actually calculate the cost variance, CV, and also the schedule variance, SV. So this can actually help to keep the project on track. For controlling method, it is to ensure that project goals like time frames, cost, budget, and all that are complied with. Some of the controlling method includes the cost control, quality control, and also time control. Without a further ado, I'm delighted to bring you to see our project budgeted segment. Firstly, payback period. For your information, payback period means the amount of time taken for an investment to recover the cost of the total investment. By using a formula of total investment divided by an annual cash flows, we obtain a total of 6 years accurately. Next, cost of employee salaries. Approximately of 250,000 ringgits are expected to be our cost for employee salaries. However, the amount taken into account are 3 million ringgits where a total of 60 employees employed. Move on to the major equipment cost. It costing us nearly about 4 million ringgit Malaysia. Where the fire heater will be the most expensive equipment and centrifugal pump will be the cheapest equipment. There are other major equipments also needed to succeed the project. For instance, flash vessel, reactor, heat exchangers and also compressors. Office equipment will be the least cost, which takes about 28,000 ringgit Malaysia. These equipments are mostly for admins and management staff. Next, to a vital part of the project budgeting plan. Expenditures cost. Costing us nearly 7 million ringgit and give huge part to our overall cost. It includes raw material, land purchasing, labor, utilities, maintenance and insurance. Hence, our overall cost is about 705 million ringgit Malaysia, include equipment cost, expenditure cost and salaries of the employees. Moving, moving on to our production and raw material ratio, 1.88 ratio of ethanol is needed to produce a ratio of 1 ethylene. To clear you from confusion, about 250,000 metric tons of ethanol per annum will produce about 133,000 metric tons per annum of ethylene. Oops, you must be wondering, is this project are profitable? Hmm, likely, the answer yes, it will. 1.88 ratio of ethanol only costs us about 502 million ringgit. And one ratio of Italy will bring us a fortune of 620 million ringgit on Malaysia. The gross profit from the production is expected to be 118 million ringgit on Malaysia. Next, our project net profit. It is being calculated by a deduction of operation costs from our profit per annum. Hence, the net profit of the project is 87 million ringgit. Lastly, in the budgeting plan. NPV was calculated. NPV brings means net present value. With a discount term of 10% and 5.5% growth per annum, it will bring us a positive value of 2 billion ringgit. Positive value here means our business revenue is greater than the total cost. Hence, it is good term. It is a good term for our investor as profits will come to them. Termination process. Project termination is a situation in which the project will be stopped or finalized as there are no reasons for further continuation. There are two possibilities on the project which is which are it can be either successful or fail. If the project is successful, it will undergo termination by addition. Termination by addition is the implementation of the project into an organization 
and it will be uh, the formal part of the organization. The reason why the project is successful is because of PM ensuring that it has that the project has been going smoothly. The support from upper management and the uh, the lower management who are good at task planning also contributes to the success of the project. If the project fails, the termination will be by extension. It means that the project will be stopped completely. This is because the project has failed to meet the aim or the objectives. This happened because either because PM wrongly allocate the budget or the upper management hasn't been really supportive towards the towards the lower management so they cause no sense of direction in the project in which lead to the project to be terminated. For the project charter, Quadratex can mainly manufacture chemical product that can be used either as an intermediate product or final product. So the main goal for our project is to manufacture ethylene to other chemical industry as a raw material. So some of the constraint for our project is to deliver the product at a limited cost and also at a specific time frame. The assumptions are the completion of the project within established parameters and the risk and dependencies are actual site conditions may vary significantly from what we expected.